says in the book of Malachi. He says, I am the Lord that changes it now. The word tells us heaven and earth will pass away, but not one jot or tittle of my words will pass away. God has put his word above his name. He did not change it in the heavens for the angels who rebel against him. He did not change it for Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden. He did not change it for Jesus in the garden of Gethsemane. And certainly today and forever, he will not change his word. For whatever he has said, he's going to bring it to pass. I want to speak on a topic. We have an altar. Jesus is the altar. An altar is a place of slaughter, a place of where sacrifices are offered. It was a place where the divine and human world interacted, a place of exchange, a place of communication, a place of influence. Since the time of Adam's fall to sin, God has never allowed man to approach him without an altar, to offer praises, to seek his mercy and his forgiveness. It is evident that an altar was indispensable requisite of every place of worship. Some built altars and worship unknown gods. Some built altars to sacrifice to devils. However, where altar worship was genuine, God responded actively to what takes place at the altar. The contest between Elisha and the prophet of Baal involves an altar demonstrated interaction between God and Baal. Noah built an altar and offered a sacrifice to God. God smelled the aroma and found it well pleasing. He responded to Noah's action by declaring that he will never again destroy all living things through a flood. And so with Abraham and so with Isaac and Jacob, even Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nisi, the Lord, our banner, a place of sacrifice, a place of worship. For he said, because the Lord had sworn that the Lord will war with Amalek from gener will, will war with Amalek from generation to generation. We read about Zacharias was at the altar of incense when the angel appeared to him. We must remind ourselves that God actively respond to what take place at the altar of your sacrifices. Now, sacrifices were the primary medium of exchange and altar interaction. Sacrifices were the essential act of external worship. However, God doesn't need a sacrifice to survive, but Israel needed sacrifices to survive. The act of sacrifice moved the offering from profane to the sacred place, from the visible to the invisible world. By this act, the worshiper seals a contract with God. Amen. The outer altar taught in the Old Testament believed that the only way into a relationship with God was through sacrifices. The existence of an altar visible drove home the point to every worshiper in Israel for over 1,500 years that you could not come into God's presence without a sacrifice. It is the same today. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness or remission of sin. And Jesus shed his blood on Calvary for our sins, for our forgiveness of sin. Amen. Jesus is the sacrifice, not only the sacrifice, but Jesus is the altar. Today we do have an altar, and that altar is Jesus himself. For the entire sacrificial system of the Old Testament was replaced by Christ Jesus, who is our tabernacle, our altar, and our sacrifice. Amen. For the Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 4, 
For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats take away sins. Once a year, the priest would offer the blood of animals for sin, and God forgives them, but their conscience was still guilty. The blood of animals would not, was not able to wash away the guilty stain or the guilty conscience of sin in the minds of every person who offered the sacrifice. Their sins will be remembered even though God had forgiven them of their sins. But Jesus offered his body and offered his blood as the perfect sacrifice for sin. And everyone who comes to the altar and confess their sins, God is going to forgive them of their sins and their sins will remember no more because God is going to cleanse the guilty conscience. Their conscience will be purged and set free from the guilt of or the heavy load of sin that they were carrying. Amen. To, to sacrifice seems as natural to man as to pray. The one indicates what he feels about himself, the other what he feels about God. To one means a felt for the need of propitiation, another the sense of dependence. But the fundamental idea of sacrifice in the Old Testament is that of substitution or covering the substitute in the acceptance of God, taking the place of, and so covering as it were the person of the, or, or the offerer of the offerer. You can find peace at the altar of Jesus. He says, I am the prince of peace, not the, prince, not the peace that the world is offering. He says, I can give you peace that satisfies the spirit man. I can give you that peace. I am the prince of peace. I am the giver of, of, of the peace. I, 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 I can give you that if you would only come to the altar, into the altar, and I'm going to give you peace. And there are many of you who are empty. You're going through all kinds of situations. There is no peace. There is a, an easiness, an you can't sleep at night, sleepless night. But I want you to know that if you receive Jesus and come to the altar as, the, as the, your altar, I tell you, you can find peace. Uh, you can find peace in the midst of the storm. Right to the altar of Jesus, you can find uh, love, the love of God Almighty. That you can, you can love the Lord with all your heart and all your might and all your soul. You can pour back to God uh, his love that he have deposited in our hearts. The Bible tells us God is love. He must love. He, has, he must give love because his very essence uh, is one of love. His character is love. Therefore, he will love. And so there is love you can find uh, at the altar. There is joy at the altar of Jesus. I mean joy at the altar. Joy unspeakable and full of glory right at the altar in the presence of the Lord. There is fullness of joy in the presence of the Lord. There is fullness of joy. And at his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Amen. There is safety at the altar. You can come and find safety in a world where fear is gripped in our mind and bad news all around and people are looking for a safe place. You can't find a safe place in the security system. You can't find a safe place in the political system. You cannot find a safe place uh, anywhere in the world. The only place you can find safety is at the altar. Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, Savior dwelling in his presence for he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And we ought to stay in that place forever. Stay in the, in the, in the, in the presence of God forever. You're going to find safety there. Amen. There is a life-changing experience with God at the altar. Anyone who comes to the altar, you're sure there's a life-changing experience with God. Remember this, our best effort, our best sacrifices, our best act, our best worship will not be accepted by God, our Father, except it is laid at the altar of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. You can give it your best shot from a religious point of view. You can give it your best shot from an external point of view. From the heart that you think that is right, but it will not be acceptable unless all your sacrifices are laid at the altar of Jesus, the sacrifice where you give your life uh, uh, holy and acceptable unto God as a sacrifice, a living sacrifice that is, and as you offer your praise unto God and give him 
thanks. As you, as you do good and communicate, they're all sacrifices when it's laid at the altar and coming from our hearts, then and only then it is acceptable to Almighty God. Let me say this again. There is a life-changing experience with God at the altar.